Rising winds pushed a massive wildfire in north central Washington in new directions. Raging wildfires race out of control across much of Okanagan. It's already County. burned over. You can still feel the heat coming from the ground. Now, early estimates indicate that as many as 250 homes may have burned in Okanagan County. Washington firestorm coverage continues as the Carlton Complex fire makes history. Fire racing through rural north central Washington destroyed about 100 homes, leaving behind smoldering rubble. Two hundred forty-three thousand acres making it the largest fire in Washington state history. It's, it's easy to think rationally about the fact that uh, fire is, an, is a natural thing. It's been occurring here on the planet for thousands and hundreds of thousands of years. But boy, when you see those black sticks and nothing but ash underneath and really no life whatsoever, right after a fire has gone through that's uh that's devastating it's emotionally hard to see the devastated landscape then it's encouraging to see life come back but for the for a moment at least i think most of us feel that it's a tragedy to see all of that green turn to black For eight years now, we've been working on this project and, and trying to figure out how beavers back on the landscape can create enough of a benefit to change, significantly change the Met health. One of the things that's going on that we all experienced this year was much lower water year. We had low snowpack last winter. We had uh, a significantly lower rainfall year this year. So many of our streams were drying up. Many of the, uh, all this off from the snow that we were hoping to have that uh, we never really got uh, and never came. So for, for the last several years, one of the things that we've been trying to do is figure out what can we do to adapt to some of the changes that, that climate change is imposing on us. The big fires that we've experienced, the low uh, stream flow that we've experienced are all things that are going to continue to change for us. And so we said, let's let's figure out how to respond to that and try to do things and, and, and enhance things as positively as we can. Climate change is something that we, we don't really know exactly what's going to happen. There are some things that we've experienced in the last couple of years that we know are very similar to what could be a much more common part of our landscape. More fire, lower streams, less snowpack, much warmer conditions, those conditions are, are almost certain to be part of the mix that we're going to have to deal with in the next few years. The Meadow Beaver Project, one of the key things that I think is really valuable for the Beaver Project to be helping in the climate change arena is if beavers store about a million gallons of water per beaver site, which is about what we think there is, uh, in, in backed up behind the dam and then soaked into the ground near the beaver pond. If that's the case, and, and then that water trickles out later in the season when it's hottest and driest, not only is that going to be useful to help keep fish and, and uh, things alive in the streams, but as we continue to use more water and water is more and more scarce because we're losing our snowpack, then that becomes much more valuable as, as one of the most important resources that we will see in the future. It's been, it's been exciting to see how well that's worked. Their instincts are to store water so they can have a home and that 
is such a big deal that the fact that our groundwater you know is slowly getting our, our water table is getting lower and lower um, and the fact that they can just store gallons and gallons of water in one area especially higher up um, and release that cooler water hopefully downstream from their site is just gonna do a world benefit for fish um, the ponds and every and the establishments also create like a refugia for for fish and other critters basically during different times of the year so we're kind of I think the one of the best parts of it is we're just bringing back this element that was previously here as much as you know we love all the science and the um, things that we can study and research um, the best part for me really is trapping matchmaking <laughs> at the hatchery and really doing that well and then going out scouting picking a site from what we've learned and deciding okay this is this looks like what they need let's see if they stay and having them released when you release there's just something about after caring for them for a certain amount of time and getting them ready to go and then taking them out there and that's a lot of hard work sometimes when you're hiking these guys out you know several miles and so we put a lot of work into that and a lot of effort for them to stay um, so the most I think regardless of everything else rewarding thing for me is to open that cage and let them just explore this new new spot that we put them in and then to come back the next week and see that they have stored several meters of water in, in a week. <laughs> like no time at all. So I think just the fact that my most rewarding like piece of this is seeing the landscape change so quickly and also releasing these guys back into areas that they used to occupy and in where they need to be and you know just you can't get around that. <laughs> it's just really really rewarding. It's a good feeling to, at the end of the day, feel like you've done something. That you've actually done something significant. You've earned your pay. You've made a difference. You've done something to help the environment or to help other people. And that's what the Beaver Project does. You know, maybe not on a daily basis, but on a weekly basis, a monthly basis, a seasonal basis. And yeah, we've, this is a great project. We've done something here. I think the question of what are we going to do differently is is almost the most important question that we can ask ourselves. I think it's going to require some leadership. I think the time has come for us to really work hard and start running in a very different direction. I think it's time for us to pick some things and then say let's let's get busy. This is just one answer to this climate change question, but it's a big one. It definitely it's going to do a lot of work that we don't have to if we can just stick them somewhere, especially up higher in the watershed, and they can just live there, you know, unaffected by us, or we can keep them on our land down lower. It's just, they are gonna do the same thing we spend a lot of money trying to fix, um, basically for free, and they're self-sustaining, so it's, it's pretty awesome. There's so many times people say, well, we, we need to make we need to make people know this. We need to make, make people understand this. And the problem is you can't, there's something you can't make people understand something if they don't want to. You can't make them know something. No matter how uh, positive you are about what the truth is or what the facts are, it, you can't change some people's mind. They're just not going to accept it. And so I think some of the, one of the most valuable things we can do is to educate young people. I think people learn, people learn what they keep with them for the rest of their life when they're young. And so to have people know, even if all you teach them is to be open to new ideas, 